Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Adam with Global Abundance LLC, back with another video. On this channel, we talk all things real estate from residential to commercial. Uh, we have a free VIP group where real estate investors and like-minded individuals like yourself share information, answer questions, and dig deep into uh, all aspects of real estate and learn and grow as a community together. So I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Uh, welcome if you're new um, and if you're already part of family thanks for checking in in today's video basically going to be talking about adding multi-family properties to your portfolio and uh, maybe that's something that you're looking to get into uh, or you are already uh, having you know some duplexes and, and multi-family properties uh, that you are managing or that, you know, you have already purchased. Uh, it's information on, you know, share some light on that if you, like I say, if you're getting involved for the first time. So a lot of real estate investors looking to diverse their portfolio and increase their rental income can, uh, you know, speed that process up by getting some multifamily. So, Multifamily properties are properties with two or more units in a single building, and they offer several advantages over investing in single family homes. Um, for starters, they generate more rental income from a single property, and they you know, tend to have lower vacancy rates than single family homes. Multifamily properties uh, can be apartment buildings, townhomes, uh, duplexes, uh, and, you know, they're picked up by real estate investors, you know, looking for streams of rental income all across the country. So anything that's, you know, two to four units is going to be considered residential, uh, even though that is a multifamily property, uh, anything five units and up is what is considered commercial in multifamily. So if you are looking at uh, a three unit building or a triplex or something like that, you'd be looking and comparing that to other triplexes in, you know, in the area. You wouldn't be uh, using a formula that you would use on the commercial side of it, which is a little different running the numbers that way. but. Uh, you'd be comparing that to residential properties because anything two to four units is still considered residential. So just keep that in mind if you didn't already know that. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some pros and cons of investing in multifamily. Uh, one of the first pros I'll talk about is higher rental income. Uh, you instead of I mean, think of having one single family home that you're renting out uh, that tenant or that family, <clears throat> you know, you, you just have that one income coming in. If they happen to leave or they're not paying, then, you know, income stops. Obviously in a multifamily situation, you got multiple tenants, multiple families paying rent. So if, one or two happen to fall behind, you know, you still have some income coming in. There's also, uh, you know, higher market rents based on the area uh, and certain amenities in the particular unit and the size of the unit and so on and so forth. So uh, those type of things can get you uh, a higher amount of rent location. Um, can play into that as well. But for the most part, you, you're getting more money coming in every month based on the fact that you have multiple units instead of just a single family uh, dwelling. Uh, the next pro is, you know, being able to diversify. And, and you know, when you're investing in multifamily properties, it, it lets you diversify your investment because it's spread across multiple units, like I was, you know, just saying there. Where it, as opposed to just one rental property, you might have multiple 
uh, houses that you're renting out. And, you know, uh, that's great. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you if you are uh, you have a five or ten unit building, um, you know, a couple units being being vacant here and there um, will affect your, your cash flow. But, you know, it's, you know, uh, uh, should be a, a, a way to increase those those occupancy rates and, you know, get things back on track pretty quickly. Uh, whereas if you having a, a, a single family homes all over the place, uh, there's going to be different factors to, you know, getting those occupied if if those are rental properties. Uh, lower vacancy rates uh, or, or risk and, you know, rates. I mean, since multifamily properties uh, can, you know, house multiple families or individuals, you know, the, the vacancy is going to be lower. And this means that investors can enjoy a more consistent stream of rental income in a single family home. Like I said, is designed for one tenant or one family. So if that house goes vacant, you know, it, it can't, you know, be good. you're not going to make rental income off the property. So since a multifamily has multiple units bringing in rental income. You know, if, like I said before, if one or a few units go vacant, you still have other tenants in the rest of the units paying rent. Now, the, some of the cons are higher maintenance costs because, you know, multifamily properties are going to have higher maintenance costs because uh, there's more units to maintain. So, it's different than a single family home where it's just this one property that you got to maintain. There's multiple units now. So uh, that's going to increase your, your maintenance cost and repairs and upkeep on the property. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, another thing, it might be harder to get funded for a uh, multi unit property. Uh, because you know banks and lenders are more cautious about approving loans due to the higher risk of, of default. Um, not impossible, but you know it, it, it's just different. Okay, so uh, lower appreciation is a, is another con, and it, multifamily properties need uh, they they tend to appreciate at a lower rate than single family homes. Um, because most people buying real estate are looking for a single family home. So multifamily has a lower demand. Uh, so they appreciate slower than, you know, the, the, the entirety, you know, with single family homes, they just appreciate slower than single family home would, uh, regardless of, uh, which way, you know, you go, uh, it's, it's, it's always important to do your research and work with a professional. So here's 10 things to look for when you, you're buying multifamily properties. Uh, focus on location, you know, like with any real, uh, real estate investment, location is going to be key. Uh, look for multifamily properties in desirable neighborhoods with low crime rates and good schools. You, you can jump online. There's there's sites where you can see a, a neighborhood's uh, crime grade and, and, and uh, things of that nature. So you'll know whether you're, you know, in a high crime rate area, low crime rate area, if there's schools around the area, what's going on in the area. You know, that's what you want to do when you're looking for a multifamily property location is always going to be key regardless. Um, the number of units as well. Uh, consider the number of units that that's in the building. Remember, like I said, two to four units is going to be residential. Five up is going to be your commercial properties. Uh, so, you know, just know more units generally are going to mean more rental income, uh, but that also means more maintenance and management responsibilities also. 
uh, take into account the condition of the property. You know, inspect the property carefully uh, so you can identify any repairs or upgrades uh, and you know, budget for that, those expenses, you know, when you're calculating your costs overall. Uh, the rental income, calculate the NOI and, you know, potential rental income, you know, if everything was being rented at its, its, its highest and best use with, you know, full market rent, you know, basically perform. But you definitely want to run your numbers off of the net operating income. OK, so. That's for each unit. You'll take into account, you know, all the rental increases that you, you might be able to do and upgrades and value adds and, and other ways to, you know, add value to that property. Uh, you obviously need to determine the operating costs, you know, which is going to go into calculating your net operating costs, um, uh, net operating income, not your net operating cost, but the cost is going to go into that. So those are your expenses, your, your utilities, your maintenance, property management fees, taxes. Uh, those are going to be your expenses. You want to look at your cash flow. Uh, calculate, you know, your expected cash flow from the property after all the expenses are paid. Um, this is, you know, going back to the numbers with your pro uh, your pro forma numbers or your projected rental income, saying, you know. Maybe it's an eight, maybe it's a 10 unit and there's eight units being occupied right now. Uh, all different rents. Maybe you would, you know, count, project what it would be if it was full vacant, uh, full uh, occupancy, 100% um, full, all 10 units are full and you're getting the highest amount of market rent. What would that potentially look like? So, you know, something that you are going to want to look into your financing options uh like i said it, it you know banks are uh less uh they're, they're 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 concerned about you know the higher rates of default so they they you know are more leery about that but by no means am i sitting here saying that you, you can't find funding you just need to look and there's plenty of options to get funded for uh, buying a multifamily property there's seller financing there's uh, a ton of options there's private money um, there's the traditional mortgage you know commercial loans um, there, there's a ton of options out there so don't take what i said earlier as i'm saying I'm just trying to really make sure I'm clear about that, that I'm not saying that it's so difficult to get funding for a multifamily property. That is not what I'm meaning to say. So hopefully you didn't take it that way. But you also want to look at property management, you know, decide whether you're going to manage the property yourself or hire a property management company uh, to handle, you know, all the day to day operations. I would advise that's what you do, even if it's a single family home, you want to be hands off. You don't want to be having to deal with uh, managing the tenants and the property every day and, and going from this property to that property, fixing this and up oh, the toilet broke. I got to do the like that's not the type of things that you should be spending your time doing unless you want to. Uh, that's on you. But. I would look into a property management uh, company that uh, is doing business in the area and ask them questions. Tenant screening. You this is this is big because this is what it's all about, right? You're getting tenants into your your your, your property and you need to know and make sure and feel that they are going to be reliable and responsible. Not going to damage the property, but most importantly, they're going to pay rent on time all the time. So your monthly income can uh, continue to grow and, and uh, continue to come in. You know, uh, it'll grow as you add value or as you raise the rent. But 
nonetheless, having the right tenants in your property is what matters the most. Okay, so tenant screening is important. The management company can also help you uh, with this. You know, make sure tenants are credit worthy and, and uh, background checks and everything that would raise a red flag. As long as there's no red flags, move forward. But you know, anything that could raise a red flag, you wanna you wanna be able to see that before it happens. That way, don't waste time with a problem tenant. And then you want to have an exit strategy. You know, have a have a plan in place uh, for selling the property. You know, when the time comes, consider you know whether you're going to hold on to the property long term or flip it quickly for a profit. So, uh, investing in multifamily can be a great way to diversify your portfolio and increase your your your, your rental income. So, uh, it's still important to approach investments of any kind, but this especially with the, the different mindset than single family homes. Uh, you know, take these factors that I talked about, you know, into consideration, you know, if you're looking to buy a multifamily right now and hopefully as a whole, this gen, this, this, this information helped you out and you'll be able to, you know, go out there and look into the idea of buying multifamily properties, adding that to your portfolio and moving into, you know, that realm of real estate investing. So hope this information was useful. Once again, click the link below in the description if you want to join the community and I'll see you in the next video.